everyone, it's Nona Grace, and I'm from Western New York. First of all, happy Halloween, and happy Blue Moon, and don't forget to turn your clocks back an hour. We get to sleep an extra hour tomorrow because it is going back to standard time. So we fall back, like in the fall, you fall back, so you can turn it back. Emily came over today, in fact, she's still here. And I wanted to, she, she brought this to my attention today. She always brings me fun stuff. But it was, I know I need to lose weight. I know how to lose weight. But I don't want to do the things I need to do to lose weight. But I still want to lose weight. You get me? She does it so much better. But anyways, that's what she talked about. And today is end of month, so end of month would be to review your expenses for the month and how was your month. My month was actually very good. The, it was very low in, until we bought the stone for in the garage and it brought it up, but it's still a very good month. My worst months are May and September so far. Those are my bad months, so keep track so that you have an idea what you're spending and what you're spending it on because each year will be a little different and you get to look back. It's kind of a log to look back and say, gee, I had stones put in the barn. What year did we have stones put in the barn? And you can look back and you'll find it or you may have bought an appliance or something and you wonder how long have you had it if you don't put it on, put it actually on the appliance like I do. <laughs> I write it right on it, all right? on the book that comes with it. I mark the date that I bought it and how much I paid. I do that. I don't know if you do that. Okay, I have um, the questions, and Jim's going to read me the questions. I thank you so much for doing this. But before we go to the questions, I'm going to put in this little video. I've got actually Rosie. I was out of the fence, and I thought, gee, I better follow her. This is the one that I named Rosie is after Jane. Patrick's daughter and was born on the same day as her daughter's birthday. So let's go see Rosie. I just brought Mr. Brown in and I looked out and there's Rosie. Hey Rosie, what are you doing? You're looking for a way in. She can't figure, she got herself out, but now she's trying to figure how do I get back in. She will fly over the fence. She gets a little nervous because I'm getting a little too close. She enjoys being out of the fence, but there she is. Look at her. Oh, Rosie, just fly. You can do it. You got yourself out. I'm not putting the fence down because there's a little bit of electricity in it and I get zapped. You guys don't seem to mind, but I sure do. She's walking around the whole, the whole loop of... Where are you going, Rosie? Hi. You've got beautiful feathers. <laughs> okay, okay. You're getting to the other side. I should probably open the door when I get there so you can get back in because you'll get over in that area and then you'll think you're trapped when you're really not trapped. Moving a little faster, she is. Oh, Rosie. I just brought Mr. Brown in. If I had to come out with you and Mr. Brown, could have communicated for a little while. Chit-chatted? Oh, okay. Just a minute, we'll get the fence door. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, Rosie. I'll open the door now. You can go in. Go in. There she goes, happy as a lark. Well, she's not a lark, but happy as a bird can be. Now for the questions. Jim, you want to read the question? And some of these will repeat, so but we'll we'll read them anyways. Yeah. Vicki Marie Living Life asks, how many kids and grandkids do you have? I have we have four children. We have one boy and three girls. And we have seven grandchildren. And the the grandchildren range from age fifteen to age five. And how many girls and boys there? That, well, I don't know. <laughs> That's a confusing question. 
I have, if I were to say what I have, I have... I biologically. Have, biologically, I have... Um, what is it I have? Four I have girls four and girls. three boys. Alex? Yeah, three boys. Yeah, I had to think. <laughs> Who are the boys? Yeah, I have... <laughs> Okay. And one that uh, is one that's a conf confused. Yes. In my mind, she's still a girl, but in her mind, or the mind of the child, she might be a boy, but she might be a girl some days, too. I don't know what she, what, what, I just think of her as a girl, because for 13, 14 actually, years, 14, 14 years, years yeah. she's a girl to me. Okay, what's the next question? Okay. Highland Homestead asks, how did you learn so much about chickens? Well, actually, I was raised with chickens when I was very young. My father had chickens, but a lot of it I don't remember. So I would always go to my brother, Anthony, and he's he's the one that would remember a lot more than I. He's, he's only two years older than me, but he did remember a lot more. And um, I do a lot of reading and a lot of looking a lot of stuff up. So if I don't know something and he doesn't know something and I don't remember from my childhood, I look it up. That's how I find out about chickens. Good researcher. Yes, I do a lot of research. Hobby Dog Bay asks, Nona, would you ever come to Mississippi to meet me? If I ever came to Mississippi, Shay, I would come and meet you. I would make sure that you knew I was in the area and we would meet up. Yes. Uh, Popo Backyard Farm asks, did you ever play a sport? Well, I was in the Girls Athletic League at school. When I was in school, I was, I was pretty athletic. I didn't play, they didn't have sports like they have sports today, but we did play against other schools. I was on a volleyball team and, and I would do that. But I also was in a competitive cheerleading squad when I was 60. 61, 60, 61, I don't know, I don't remember. I was in my early 60s. I was the oldest one on the squad, and we would compete, and we went to Virginia, and we went, I don't know, we went all over, and we were the grand national champions, but there was, you had to be at least 20 years old or older to be on this squad, and so I was a cheerleader for, for a season. It was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kimber Kiddo Life asks, if you could list one thing you wish you would have done, what would it be? If I could have done something different, I would have not cluttered up my house right from the get-go. <laughs> Instead, uh, we, it seemed like we came with very little and now we've got tons. And I would like to not have that. I wish I had a house that I could sit right next to my house and take only the stuff out of my house that I want in that new house and then move us over there, and the rest of the stuff would have to go to the dump. Okay. Gloria Lagrune says, I would like to know if y'all have any snakes, tarantulas, or mice, rats, etc., outside in your yard. Well, we don't have any, she, because we have chickens. Yeah, because we, don't, we have chickens. We don't have any tarantulas. We have snakes, but we have never had snakes in the chicken house. And um, as far as rats go, oh yeah, we had rats. I made the mistake and put some bay, hail, or hay bales, couldn't even think how to say it, <laughs> some hay bales in the chicken run because I thought before we put the big screen, the green screen around it to stop the wind, I was trying to block the snow from coming in and those darn rats came too. And so I used to sit on those bales and I'm thinking how they were so bold. We saw them dancing around one day in the sunshine and I thought, oh my goodness, they could have climbed on me when I was sitting on the bale. So we took the bales out and boy, they were huge. They were so big and it was because of the hay bales and there was leftover food a lot of times. Well, now they have just the chicken food and so I don't have the, and I don't have the hay in there anymore. So I don't have any rats. Thank goodness. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. G, 1965, says, I've been calling you the chicken lady to different folks. I hope you don't mind. Are you all coming to our meetup? Mr. G, I don't mind you calling me the chicken lady. In fact, I kind of like it. 
I do plan to come to your meetup, and I'm looking really forward to it. I've already made arrangements for Mr. Brown to be taken care of because, you know, when you have chickens, you got to find somebody to take care of the chickens, and I have a dog, so somebody has to take care of the dog. And so guess who gets stuck with it? Emily. <laughs> so, yes, we plan to be there. Okay, and uh, the blue bike and Doyle. First he says, I have nothing, and then he says, ah, I got one. Ever had a banana sandwich? Well, Doyle, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> I have had banana squished on toast, but I've never had just a plain sandwich. So if you count toasting the bread as having a banana sandwich, yes, I have. Okay. And they're delicious, believe it or not. <laughs> Even better with peanut butter, but I've done it without peanut butter. Now, I could combine some of these. No, just no? keep going. Okay. Pamela's Adoring Crochet. When did you start raising chickens? We started raising them ourselves. It was 2016. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we, had a, we had to look that one up because it, sometimes it feels like we've had them for a long time and then other times it feels like, gee, we haven't had them very long. And it took me probably a good year before Jim would would build something so I could put the chickens in. I got my first two chickens, baby chicks, from my brother Anthony because I didn't want to buy six because at the farm store you had to get at least six. And I didn't want to get six. So I went to my brother Anthony who had chickens and he had chicks that he had hatched out. And so I brought home two chicks and I named them... Um, Gert and Stella, Stella yeah. and Gertrude, I think. Stella and Gertrude, I believe. And they ended up being roosters, so I had to end up going to the farm store anyways, and I had to choose my, I wanted Buff Orpingtons is what I really wanted. And so I chose them, and luckily I chose girls. I looked at the wings. In fact, the guy tried to give me this one bird, and I said, no, I don't want that one and it would have been a rooster, and then there was another one with a pasty butt, and I didn't want that one because pasty butts are not good for baby chicks. And so I ended up with all girls, so I got six hens. Okay. Diane Thurlham, I think it is. How old were you when you learned to crochet? And were you self-taught, or did somebody teach you? Diane, I learned to crochet when I was probably four or five years old. I was somewhere in there, and my mother is the one that taught me. She would buy us a, a skein of yarn, and we used to make chains, and the chains were probably miles long. And when we'd get the yarn, the whole skein done with chains, my mom would say, okay, rip it out and make another one. So we'd rip it out and make another chain. When our chains... you guys so good at ripping out? <laughs> <laughs> so my chains were really, really good, and when we finally learned to make a chain that was really nice and flat and even, then she started to teach us how to double crochet, and then we went from there to, you know, single crochet. Double crochet was what she taught us first, and then single crochet, believe it or not. And then we would were allowed to make either a scarf or an afghan, and I made an afghan. Okay, and I think it was also Diane who says, have you ever been out of this country? Well, I've not been to Europe, but I have been to Canada, if that counts. I went to Blythe, Ontario, which is not the United States, it's Canada, mm -hmm. and we camped there. It was really very nice. A lot of people are surprised when you talk about going to Canada. They think it's going to be really cold. No, it's just like here. The temperatures are the same, pretty much. They may really, be, at least when you're around the Great Lakes. Yeah, we were. We were, but we were we in were Blythe, near... Blythe, Ontario, and going across the border is is scary. I don't like going into a country that yeah have to see the officers, and they ask you questions. And I don't like coming back into the United States. You know, you feel like a criminal, even though you know you're not. But it's it's scary. It's a real scary experience. Yep. Okay, Seattle Sapphire's Low Carb World. How long have you had chickens? And was it hard to hard at first? 
It seems like a lot of work. We got the chickens in 2016. And the hardest part was to make sure that you had housing for them outside. And because we have winters, you had to figure out how you were going to keep their water from freezing because they can, they can manage without a lot of food, but you need water. Every creature needs water. You can, you can go days without food, as we all know with, with doing keto. You can um, fast for many days, but you need to have some kind of liquid eventually. And so that was the hardest part. But as far as raising chickens, no, it's not been hard. But there's a lot of things that have come up that have kind of baffled my mind. Like when, when little lady had her stroke, it was like, okay, now what do we do? Thank goodness I've never had a bumblefoot, but my daughter had bumblefoot, had a, bum, had a chicken with a bumblefoot. And I think that would be kind of scary to have to deal with. And she also had one that had the foot freeze off. Yeah, she had, oh gosh, <laughs> that would be awful. But yes, there's a lot of things that could go wrong with chickens, but thankfully mine have been pretty easy. Okay, and related, Simply Pam asks, how did you all meet and... What made you decide to get chickens, and how long have you had them? Well, we've had them since 2016, and Jim and I met roller skating. I will, not in this video, because this is going to be too long, but I will put a little clip of my roller skating in. Not with him, because at the time, I could do all these fancy things, and he couldn't, and now I'm kind of afraid on the skates, but I still can do the waltz, and... Um, but that's how we met. We met roller skating. Yep. People don't roller skate anymore, but we met roller skating. Uh, Jane Patrick asks, I remember you used to do pull-ups. Do you still do them? Jane, I am so weak that it's unreal. I tried to do a pull-up today, and I was lucky if I could just bend my elbows, <laughs> let alone do a pull-up. I used to be able to do six of them there for a while. And I was up to 10 back a ways, but you have to go back a ways. And, um, but now, no, I can't do them. I've gained about 10 pounds, and I think those 10 pounds have really made it more difficult. Plus, I've gotten weaker. What was the other question? Okay, her other one is, I know you love hobbies and crafts. Is there a craft you've wanted to learn but never have. The craft that I would like to learn, and I really should have taken advantage of it, is when they were making stained glass windows for the church. They were teaching how to do stained glass, and I didn't take the, the class. I should have taken it, and that's something mm -hmm. that I would have done. But to do that craft on a regular basis would be very expensive, I think. So that's probably why I never got into it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Elizabeth Smart asks, what is the food you miss most on low carb? And what's your favorite dish on low carb? My favorite dish on low carb is crack slaw. And the food that I miss the most is my pasta suku, which is spaghetti. But I make my spaghetti with eggplant and zucchini squash and bell peppers. I don't care to have it with meatballs. I do put the pork hocks in or the pig's feet into the sauce to cook. And the Italian sausage. And the Italian sausage, I put mm. that in there. But <laughs> I don't care if I have meatballs. But it's the pasta suku that I miss, which would be spaghetti to the rest of you. <laughs> okay. Now this one is a, it's a difficult name. Uh, I think it's Ilga M. Clary. We can't decide... If it's I I G A, G -A or, or I L G A, because no matter how I throw it into the computer, it just kind of throws it. I can't tell. So, if you could tell me, maybe, in your comment, right? Or maybe with a capital first letter and then the second letter, small letter. I don't know. So, what is your question, though? Okay, her question is, uh, I thought it would be nice to hear about the origin of the word Nona. Nona. Nona is grandma, and it's in northern Italy is what it's from. 
Now, I'm from Sic my family. I'm not from Sicily, but my family is from Sicily. I'm a firstborn American. My father was actually born in Sicily, and everybody was called Nana. And what I have found is a lot of people that are not Italian use that as their name for grandma. They use Nana, and they're not even Italian. They're not Sicilian. They're not. They're just. They could be Irish, Swedish, they could Polish, be any, uh, anything. anything. Well, the Polish are Busha. <laughs> but um, I wanted to be different and so and I didn't want to be called grandma because a lot of kids can't say grandma they can't go the girl they go gamma instead of grandma and I didn't want to be any other name so I chose to go with the northern Italian and that's how Nona and they they say it as Nona and so that's what I am I'm Nona and Nona is just grandma Grace is part of my first name Nobody asked me what my name was, but I'll tell you what my name is. My name is really Mary Grace, but I, I kept the Nona with the Grace because I didn't want people to call me Mary. So I could have put my name in as my channel name. It could have been um, Mary Grace, but then people would have been calling me Mary, and I didn't want them doing that. So You're definitely not a Mary. No, I'm not a Mary. <laughs> and so Grace... I didn't mind Grace at all, but and some call me just Nona, which is fine too. So Nona or Nona Grace or Grace. Uh, and she also says, I believe in one of the videos you mentioned you were eating keto. Yes, I was for almost three years, but I'm starting to. Jim still is, but he sometimes eats what I cook, <laughs> and I'm bad. I've been trying to work more towards on my hormones to see what uh, what my body needs. And I've been at a standstill for such a long time. And I actually went up a little bit. So I decided I'd try something new. And so I've gone down just a smidgen. But I hover. I still hover at the same weight. So I'm, it's, it's um, been a real challenge. And I think menopause has a lot to do with it because I had never in my life had to worry about what I ate, which I hate to say because I know a lot of you have struggled all your life. But it wasn't until I was in my 50s that I started to notice that the weight would start to go on. So I was, because I'm still wearing the same clothes I wore. When I was in high school, the only thing that's different is the slacks, my my legs got a lot fatter than what they used to be. I carry my weight in my lower half of my body, which is the good place to carry your weight if you're going to carry it. Okay. okay. Karina Ann Crochet asks, What is your favorite color and food? Uh, my favorite color now is red, but my real favorite color was baby blue or powder blue. I um, would, would all my cars have been blue up to this one that I have orange. And I didn't want it's red. It's almost a gold. I, would, it, I still it is, say it's, it's gold. It's but. more gold color, yeah. It wasn't as orange as I thought it was going to be. But I didn't want a red car because I got a red car for my daughter when we got, when we chose her color. Because she could have either had green or red and she chose red. Or so black. What, or black, yeah. So she chose red, and so I chose orange for mine. But I guess red is my favorite color now, and the only reason is, is because as I've gotten older, my skin has gotten paler. When I had dark brown hair, my skin was more vibrant looking, and the pale colors don't look as pretty on me anymore. Mm -hmm. The red, the red kind of brings out, I reflect the color. <laughs> <laughs> brings out the fire. The yeah. The Aries fire. The Aries fire in me. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, and Emmy says, have you ever had a nickname? Yeah, sort of. My nickname was sort of, when I was in fifth grade, they called me Gracie. My sisters used to call me Gary Mace because they used to switch the, the G with the M and the M with the G. And at work, they'd call me MG. And when they used to say, oh. OMG, and I says, yes, because <laughs> they weren't saying OMG for me. They were, you know, what they were saying. They were saying, OMG. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, she also asks, do you and Jim have pet names for each other? No, never have. No. Um, and then she asks, do you have any phobias? Or what is your worst fear? My worst fear? I don't know. I don't have a worst fear, I guess. I don't know. No, no I don't, don't know. have one, I guess. And then she says, have you ever had a crush on a movie star? <laughs> no. Well, I did like Elvis Presley a long time ago, but not to the point where I'm madly in love with him or something. I used to like his music. I loved his movies. And believe it or not, I'd like the ones with um, Annette Funicelli in it also. I used to like her mm. movies, and even though she's a... A girl, but her movies were always good. It was the movies that I liked. When you'd see somebody in a movie, you knew it was going to be a good movie. Um, either a comedy or... I can't think of some of the people. Romantic. Or romantic, yeah. But okay. that's... Okay, uh, and then she asked, Was there ever, ever a food you had to eat that you really, really hate? I had to eat snails once. <laughs> Actually, every New Year's I had to eat snails. I had to have, I had to eat at least two snails because, oh gosh, my mother didn't like them, so she wasn't going to make us eat them, but she wanted us to at least try them because my brothers would eat the snails. My dad would get the snails from the, from the Italian import store, and she, every New Year's they would make snails with the spaghetti sauce and I'm, it smelled really good but gosh if you ever looked at the bottom of your tongue that's what the snail looked like to me and it was not a good feeling in my mouth and so I would eat two snails and boy I'm lucky they'd stay down because that was awful Have you ever had a guardian angel moment? The only thing I can think of as a guardian angel moment is if I was near death, but I've never been near death, so I don't think I've ever had a guardian angel moment. I was very, very sick when I had a ruptured appendix, but I was too young to even notice if I was any angels were taking care of me. <laughs> so, no, I guess that's it. That's it. That's it. Well, thank you so much. I hope that you enjoyed listening to these answers to these questions and Emmy you were not too late I did get you in I always I checked to make sure you were there before I did this video because I know yours is always coming in because she she has she can't watch them earlier in the day and by the time she gets there it's usually she's actually usually my last person to comment and I waited for you so I hope you have a great night and I'll see you all tomorrow take care and bye bye